And just like that, we picked up the camera once again, ladies and gentlemen. Mayhem. Let me show you. Here we go. All right. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. I know you guys are tired of me saying I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. But it's very difficult when you cannot pick up the camera when you're doing so much work and it's just like you take two steps forward and 15 back and I'll explain later but check it out guys so we are done with the back building so now we're in the front building now so thank God for that all right so I'm gonna show you around you know also I have to put this cap back in the pool I'm gonna show you why in a minute so that means that requires for me to put on my bathing suit and jump in that bad boy right here because as you can see I don't know if you can you see these little white caps there that one's missing right there so what happens is they take it out of the pool the kids they they unscrew it and they play with it i don't know why but that's what they do so anyway let me show you around welcome to the brand new kitchen dining room breakfast area whatever you want to call it as you can see let me show you around it is done so we finished with the floors everything came out really nice put the tables back and everything we also did, of course, the sheetrock work. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just go to the video before this one and you'll see what I'm talking about. So all this was torn down. We put new sheetrock and of course we painted it this nice little gray color there. And that wall as well, we ripped it off and we put a new one due to the flood that we had here. So all we need to do guys is put one TV there, one TV over there. We already put this one. This was originally there. We also added this backsplash here. Came out pretty nice. Because originally we had this wood one. Let me show you right now. We had this one here. I don't know if you guys remember. Right? So we had that one. But now we did that real nice. We did this it came out really good and of course we put all the cabinets back this we added here so it came out really nice as you can see that was never there before we just added it so it came out pretty good so now <clears throat> what I'm working on well this morning actually I'm trying to get the juicer to work but there's a there's a hose behind here that came loose I already took the pan out, but the problem is that the hose is very underneath the motor, so it's very hard to get to. So what I'm going to have to do is, I'm going to have to call the, the, the company to come out and fix that for, for me, because I don't have the time to do that, because that's going to take some time, because I have to remove everything to get to that hose. I don't know why they designed it that way. Um, I don't know if you guys got a better method if you got that same juicer you let me know but um, I've just been getting my butt kicked with that hose because <clears throat> the clamp came loose and it's very hard to get out so this is the juicer here if you guys uh, have one in your hotel or in your property let me know how to get to that hose that's behind the motor that came loose but I don't have the time for that so I already called a guy the company they're coming out to fix it all right so our next step is like i said put the tvs up we're gonna have to get rid of all this stuff here put it in the in the trash and we could give this uh breakfast room back we could go back in business and i'm sure the cooks and the the breakfast staff 
are going to be very happy because it's very uncomfortable in the other little breakfast room that we have because it's super small and we have to fit all those people in that little area okay so that's that so also yesterday guys i had to fix <coughs> excuse me i had to fix uh this hose here that came out of this oven uh so there's the hose the main hose that comes out of here i don't know if you guys can see it the white one for some strange reason it broke and it was leaking in the middle of the hose here i don't know what happened um the only thing i the only thing i know is that they were working next door which is a fast food restaurant and they were drilling a lot so i saw a lot of um nails and and bits sticking out the wall but they took it out already and they penetrated that hose so i had to replace the hose as you can see it's brand new and just put it back in the, in the drain here so that was a pain in the butt because all this was full of water it's funny guys because all the problems that we have here in the hotel i'm gonna say about 85 percent of the problems here in the hotel is all water all water like for instance i gotta see what's going on here look all water this freezer here is connected everything's working fine but it's leaking so i gotta see what's going on with this all water every single time water speaking of water let's put on my bathing suit i'm gonna jump in the pool then i'm gonna show you guys the rest of the the progress in the rest of the hotel we got our bathing suit so now we're gonna put <clears throat> the cap back it's very easy it's just you thread it on but you gotta be careful you don't double thread it or else it's gonna get stuck and then it's hard to get out uh, so I'm gonna set down the camera here and get a good angle so you guys can see all right so guys so basically what I do is I don't go under the water because you have to open up your eyes and it's very hard to see and I don't know how to float I mean I don't know how to stay under the water without floating up don't ask don't make fun of me I'm not a professional but I got this down to a science so I put it in my feet and then I screw it in check it out So that little work order is done. After a nice refreshing dip in the pool, it woke me up. Water's nice and warm. So we know that the heater's working. We got our stuff drying, so that's good. So now what we're gonna do is <clears throat> we're gonna I'm gonna take you to the progress of the rooms. Okay? So now, once I get up there, then I'll tell you exactly what's going on. But uh, it's just been going up and down, up and down. It's hard to explain, but I will explain it. Check it out. It's just been raining and raining and raining, guys. We can't catch a break from the rain. But anyway, so we're in one of the rooms that's being renovated. Now, like I said before, we finish the back building. Um, so now we're in the front building. So as you can see, they're already working on this. All right. So now the problem um, with this side of the building is that they have to carry all the materials around. They don't have the luxury that they had before, which is 
everything that was already in the back, the dumpsters were in the back, everything was literally right there so they could just go dump and keep going, um, you know, keep working. It's not like that no more. Now they gotta go around, get all the materials, down some flights of stairs, go down the elevator, and go probably walk about five to seven minutes to the dumpster now. That's the only problem. So that's where, that's why it's delayed a little bit. Now another little problem is that it's not, the hallways are not short, like the front, like the back building. These hallways are long guys. So we have about 30 to 35 rooms in each hallway. So I'm gonna show you right now. So basically these are the elevators. So once you come out of the elevators, they come here and that's the hallway. You see, I, I know that the camera makes it look exaggerated, but it is pretty long, okay? So they're working on this. We're on the second floor right now. Apparently, they told us that they're gonna finish with this floor by Wednesday. So once Wednesday comes, we gotta give this rooms back to the front desk so they could sell it. But the problem is that we gotta come right behind them and PM the rooms. So what we're gonna do is, I came with a master plan is, since they're almost done, well, kind of, since they're almost done, like for instance, this one, the sink is already on, but no toilet and no uh, bathtub, right? So what we're gonna do is, once uh, <coughs> they install the bath, the, the toilet and everything, it doesn't even matter if they put the ceiling tiles or not. We're gonna come in and do what we gotta do as far as PM. That way, when Wednesday comes around, everything's ready to go. You know what I mean? We don't have to wait till Wednesday. Then we're gonna be delayed another two days probably until we finish. So no, we're gonna go, we're gonna work right, right alongside of them. Like for instance, look, they did that. That's not good. Oh boy, yeah. They got a lot of work to do. I mean, it's not easy guys. It's not easy. All right. We're gonna go to the third floor and see how that's looking. But like I said, guys, uh, you're gonna bump heads once in a while with these contractors, you know what I mean? Uh, it's never gonna be flowers and roses and, and peaches and cream or whatever you wanna say. There's always gonna be a little couple of bumps in the road. You're never gonna meet your deadline, especially when you're doing every single room here in the hotel, you know what I mean? So with that being said, um, hold on a second. With that being said, it's, like I said, it's tough, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Well, what's this Pex doing in the middle here? What's going on here? Look at this. What happened here? Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. They were using that big long piece of pex to to hold the doors but well, anyway we're on the third floor here so they're store they're installing the vanities in this floor here so this is what i do every morning guys i mean i walk all the floors oh and by the way all the floors the second third four, and fourth floor are closed in the front building there's no guests there's no nothing it's completely shut down we're just using the back building for for guests but the problem with that is that it's very uncomfortable for everybody um like i said nobody said it was going to be easy because the reason why i say uncomfortable especially for the staff is because all the housekeepers they keep their stuff here in the front building so they have to you know, they have to walk through, through maces and they have, like for instance, they got to walk through all this. So we're in the fourth floor now, as you can see. So in this one, the same thing, they're installing the vanities. Let me show you a room real quick. And um, 
Yeah, they did them already. So now they're gonna install the sinks, toilet, and of course, do the plumbing for the for the bathtub and and change all the valves. That's another thing too. They're changing all the valves out, which is good. You always want to do that, especially the ones that don't open or they're hard to close or whatever. So that's what they're doing now. All right. So basically, that's what I do. I walk um, nice and early when nobody's around, so I could check. I could check everything out. See everything's going good. And so far, so good. Ooh, long way down there, boy. So yeah, so now we got these ADA rooms in the back building. Uh, now ADA rooms are the handicap rooms that they're still in the back. They haven't finished those yet. We got about five of them. And the reason why they didn't finish those at first is because for those particular rooms, the inspectors come out. They come out, especially for those rooms. For the regular rooms, they only check about maybe two, three, uh, four or five tops. They don't go beyond five rooms because they're basically uniform, you know what I mean? The regular rooms. But for the handicap rooms, it's a different story because all the fixtures got to be in a certain length. They're going to be in a certain, um, you know, you got to be precise on the measurements so it's, you got to be precise because they do come out with the <clears throat> with the measuring tape and the whole thing also the grab bars got to be in a certain place uh so it could be hand um you know so they could jump from the bathtub to their wheelchair they got to be in a certain place as, uh in a different measurement as well so you got to be precise on that so that's what we were doing yesterday as well i was with um the foreman of the crew here that they're uh, of the you know the people that are working here and we measured you know how they say measure twice cut once well we measured about five to six times because they do not play here in new jersey with the ada rooms they do not play around um inspectors if you're off by half an inch or something they make you rip, they make you rip it off and do it again you know, it happened in one room already. Um, we and luckily, luckily we it was a nice dude. He was a cool dude, but he really, he said, um, you know, I usually let little things like that slide, but it was it's off by a half an inch. If it was only off by a couple of centimeters, he would have let it go. But half an inch to a handicap room, it's a long way, man. People could get hurt because you know they're handicapped. So. They made it take it out. Luckily, we didn't put the sheetrock or anything yet, so it was okay. But overall, everything's looking good, so I guess today they're going to work on sinks. Um, I got a, a couple of words of advice, especially for the contractors. If you do this type of work, okay? If you guys do this type of work that you go in and you demo, let's say, a hotel or an apartment, and you, then you have to remodel it, and put, you know, bathtubs in or sinks or TVs or whatever, whatever the case may be. Whatever it is that you do, flooring, anything. Um, my words of advice out of this whole experience that I'm going through here with with with, with this construction crew and and plumbers and electricians or whatever. A word of advice is if you own a business and you give your client a deadline make sure that you meet that deadline that's all I can say because if you don't meet that deadline it's a bad look not only on you and your company but now you losing trust from the from the client because the client now is losing money you see what I'm saying now in this particular the reason why I'm saying this is because this uh, contractor, he was supposed to be done by the 8th. And as you can see, we're not in the 8th any longer. We are on the 16th. And they're still, they're just starting to demo. Well, they just finished yesterday, but the, the front building. So you know that they're not going to meet the, well, of course, they're not going to meet the deadline, but 
So we had a big meeting yesterday. It was it was a little, it got a little heated, the meeting. It did get a little heated. But uh, basically, in a nutshell, the owners of the hotel are losing money and the contractors are losing money. So if I was you, if, you, if, if you're a contractor and you're watching my channel, if I was you, I'm not trying to tell you how to run your business or anything like that, but if I was you, I will not give a deadline. I would just say around this time and we'll take it from there. You know what I mean? If you start mentioning dates, now the client is going to start getting excited. Like, oh, okay, we're good. So now, we're, now they start making plans. You see what I'm saying? And once they make the plans and you don't meet your deadline, now those plans got to be put in the back burner. And that's not good for anybody because now those other people that are supposed to come in and do the other work that they already mentioned, now they got to be on pause. And that's how you lose money. Not only that, but... Let's say you mentioned that you were going to be done by the 8th. And you're not done by the 8th. It's already the 16th. You cannot rent your rooms. You're losing money there as well. So never put a deadline, like a date on the deadline. Just say maybe by the middle of the month or maybe by the end of the, end of the month. Just say like that because if you start putting dates and you can't meet that quota, or that deadline, no good, no good. People's gonna start losing trust on you and your company. Even if you're doing a fantastic job, even if you're killing it, but if you put numbers, days, deadlines, you know? And I know what you're saying, oh, but it's hard. They wanna know a date. Nah, just be like, I cannot say that because I can't see through walls, like for instance, See these walls here? Some of them had tiles instead of regular walls like this. So now, instead of being one inch, now it's two inches or three inches that you gotta go because it was it had the original tiles on it and not the, the, the waterproof sheetrock. You see what I'm saying? So that's why you shouldn't put um, days you know, mentioning days when you do deadlines because you don't know what you're gonna run into. You don't, you don't, you know? Maybe you have a crew of 12 people, let's say, and some people get sick. Now what? Now you're working with six people, let's just say, or seven people, and now you can't meet your deadline. You see, things are gonna happen, guys. So that's why my advice to the contractors or, or anybody that does work like this, um, never put, days on deadlines can't do it can't do it all right everything looks good let's see what else we got it's raining again so anyway guys uh so basically my job in the morning with these contractors before they start because they usually start at eight o'clock it's currently seven o'clock uh i open up everything as you can see we have everything locked up i showed you in other videos that's the little work area over there. So we have everything under lock and key. So I just open up everything. That way when it's uh when it's time um you know for them to work, they're not waiting on me. You know what I mean? Everything's already open and everything's ready to go. So I just open up everything for them. Oh look. Get everything ready for them. That way, uh, they won't be in the lobby just waiting for me. You know what I mean? That's how you waste time. So I just open up all the locks here for the containers and the dumpsters. Because one thing is, another thing is people love to waste time for some reason. I don't know why, but I don't. Before I forget, guys, we have passed the 2,000 subscriber mark. Sound the air horns, put the confetti on, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Man, 
it is awesome. It's an awesome feeling, guys. I, you guys don't. And listen, there is a ton, a ton of comments that I got to get to. I haven't, guys, trust me. I'm not ignoring you. I'm not doing none of that. As you can see, I've just been busy here at work and, and at home, which I cannot wait to show you those projects. I know I've been hyping it up for the last two or three videos, but we will get to the backyard soon enough and I'm gonna show you everything I've done there, okay? From beginning to end. And of course, over here in the hotel as well. But guys, it's just comments after comments after comments. Um, and not only about the maintenance videos, but about my adventure videos as well. And people have been commenting, actually they've been commenting a lot in those videos. So I have a lot of plans this summer guys. So get ready for that. But again, put the air horns, put the confetti. 2000, baby, we passed it. All right, so big shout out to all my new subscribers. Big shout out to all my vets, and let's keep it rocking. And with that said, make sure to tell a friend to tell a friend about the Zuma Vlogs. And we're gonna get to those comments. Don't worry about it. Peace.